Okay. Here she is. Nancy, Nancy and I met team teaching kindergarten in Vacaville. And uh, she retired uh, five years ago, and she's been waiting very patiently. What a lot of people don't know is we promised each other when we were, geez, about 40 years old that we'd retire at 55. <laughs> and we felt that living a uh, you know, pretty simple lifestyle, in fact, our, our idea of a, a, just an adequate vacation spot is a Forest Service campground with water, uh, we could probably manage that, right? And uh, we're both about to turn 68 years old, so we kind of miss that. We miss that thing. But, you know, the thing is, in a really good month when everything goes my way, I'm home about five days. And sometimes I'm, like, I just get home, you know, I'll say, she'll say, are, are you going to be home this weekend? And I'll say, well, you know, I think I can get home for about four hours and, and basically it's just to drop something off and leave. And, uh, you know, we've got a six-year-old grandson living with us, which means Nancy's been a single parent uh, for a while. And uh, so, you know, like I'm anxious to kind of start doing my part again. And uh, I am... I will tell you, I, I am not going to go on and on because I was the guy that kept saying, we've got to stop doing this celebration stuff. Like when Eric said, you know, I know you didn't want to do this. He's right, because I kept lobbying to do something different. You know, I keep looking at my watch, but there are just a couple things I need to tell you. <laughs> and I'll tell you, like, sometimes when I come home, and, you know, I don't know that it's happened since I've been president. But I know what happened when I was vice president. I know what happened when I was secretary treasurer. I would come home and I would say, I can't do this one more day. I quit. And Nanny would say, quit what? You mean mowing the lawn or, you know, <laughs> doing the chores? And then I would just go on some kind of a rant about, and you guys know what I'm talking about because it's those days, those days when you come home from work and by God, you are not going to get up and do it again. It's just too hard. And it's that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. What she would do every single time is she would talk me off the ledge. She would rub my back. She would say things like, look, you're doing good work. You're just not feeling it right now. You know, you're, you, we need you to stay in this work. You know, you just don't feel it right now. And, and she, has been, she has really been my rock. Uh, she has been, you know, she's my best friend in the world that I see, you know, what, if I'm lucky, you know, five or six days a month. And so I am so excited about the opportunity to actually, you know, be a husband again, you know, and, and, and have a honey-do list on the table and, 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 you know, get that. So, you know, that being said, uh, there are a couple people in this room that just really deserve uh, recognition. And, you know, I could go on and on about uh, Mickey, and I've done that already, and I could do that about Eric, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, Sandy Thornton, you saw her in the video. Sandy, wherever you are. When I got to the board of directors, when I got to the board of directors and felt just pretty much isolated, based on what I was feeling and, and what I, that's why we use a, a mic on me all the time, just so you know. Remember when I used to hit the mic all the time when I was talking? Sandy saw something in me that led her to just kind of pull me closer and over the years, and that was in 1996. And, uh, and Ann Shadwick, same thing. You know, one of the things Sandy did for me was she uh, I, I like to refer to it as she'd take me to the woodshed every once in a while to explain things to me, you know. And she really, she really helped me understand what what's uh, the, the right path, you know. And and Anne, you know, I don't know there was anybody on the board when I got there that had the kind of institutional memory she had, you know. It's just absolutely phenomenal, you know. But even before I got here, you know, I I had a relationship with somebody that um, 
you know, will we'll always, this, this person will always be a part of who I am, will always be one of my best friends. And no matter where I go, I will always be connected to Sandra Lowe. Sandra, the time we spent as chapter presidents together, you know, I would call Sandra, we met at the, uh, probably at the service center council, and one time I called Sandra, and here was the message, hi. If you're one of those maniacs who's called to threaten me or my family or threaten my life or say you're going to kill me, please leave that threat now. <laughs> and then there would be a pause in the there'd be a pause in the message for like a second or two, and then you'd hear, if you're a regular person, leave your number and I'll call you back. <laughs> you know? And, and I say that just to remind you of the, the fights that we've been through as local leaders. And, and you all know that. You know, if you're local president, you just can't manage. You just can't do it if you don't have somebody right there in your business helping you. And Sandra, you were that for me. And the incredible thing is you're still that for me. And you have been my rock and you have been my inspiration this whole time. I couldn't have done this without you. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, one last uh, one. Last one. Um, is Dennis Kelly in the room? You know, Dennis Kelly, you guys know from the Florida Council, like, how he can get, you know? <laughs> and, and, and he'll get to a microphone, and he'll just give you hell. And uh, what most of you don't know is that Dennis is a very dear friend of mine. And every once in a while, I'd call him and I'd say, you know, the California Teachers Association president needs some time with his senior advisor. Where can we meet and talk? And sometimes I made that call and sometimes Dennis made that call. But the thing was, it was always about trying to be in the best position to do the best things for the kids of California. And... You know, I, I really believe, Dennis, that the counsel that you afforded me during this, in particular during this time that I've been president, has just been invaluable. And like I said to Sandra, I don't know that I could have stayed the course without your counsel. Thank you so much. And uh, Larry Allen, I probably said this when he left the board. You know, every once in a while, you just need a good kick in the butt. You know, you need somebody who loves you to just pretty much grab you by the collar and, and tell you the truth, whether you like to hear it or not. And Larry's done that for me as long as I've known him. One of my dearest friends in the world. And one of the things I'm really excited about in terms of leaving council is that I'm actually to get to spend time with Larry the last time I saw him for any extended period of time was when I was standing next to him when he left the board. Just because any time that I have, I try to give to Nancy, you know? So, uh, Larry, man, we're just getting started. And you know what? I could go on and on. I could start naming people, but I will tell you this. The things that I say, I don't make up. The things that I say come from the conversations that we've had. You think about the people in this room. You think about the times that you just stood in line with me and said some stuff or come over and shook my hand and said some things. The voices that you so willfully just put in front of me have formed the, the, the language and the concepts and all this of this. And what I've tried to do is reflect back to you what I believe has been living in this body, and I cannot thank you enough for opening to me and telling me your truth because it has made me a much stronger leader and made me much able to do this. Let's have lunch. 